In 1981, Bill Casing, author of We Never Went to the Moon, wrote that one of the reasons he believed the moon landings were faked was because the lunar module took off without showing any signs of engine exhaust. His claim was later presented in the Fox Moon Hoax special. In the footage of the ascent stage going up, what you don't see is an exhaust plume coming out of the rocket engine nozzle. What a ride, what a ride. But what do we see? We see the ascent stage suddenly pop up without any exhaust plume whatsoever, as though it were jerked up by a cable. The standard propeller response is that the propellants used were invisible. Phil Plate from Bad Astronomy had this to say. There's actually a simple reason why you cannot see the flame from the lander when it took off. The fuels they used produced no visible flame. The lander used a mix of hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide and oxidizers. These two chemicals ignite upon contact and produce a product that is transparent. Last year, I came upon some footage from the Apollo 9 mission that would seem to contradict this, and which I uploaded in a video titled Spider's Web. In one of my earlier videos, I read out this passage from Shepard and Slayton's book, Moonshot. It regards the trans-Earth injection burn on Apollo 8. At the scheduled moment, Borman, Lavelle and Anders felt the flaring engine bell hurl forth a long stream of flame, emitting a wide plume of glowing plasma gas behind them. Now, it is important to note that the Command Service Module and Lunar Module both used the same propellants. Aerozine 50, which is a 50-50 mix of hydrazine, an unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine, or UDMH, was the fuel, and nitrogen tetroxide was the oxidizer. If the ignition of these propellants produced a plume of glowing plasma gas, as Slayton and Shepard assure us, we should expect to see something similar in the videos of the lunar module ascent stage blasting off the moon. Instead, no plume is visible. It has been argued by some that the plume caused by these propellants is supposed to be invisible and the passage from the book was purely artistic. However, whilst watching through the 16mm reels from the Apollo 9 mission, something caught my eye. Here, we see one of the two spacecrafts off in the far distance. First of all, I'm not sure which of the two craft it is. It could be Lunar Module Spider, but again, judging by its seemingly cylindrical appearance, it could very likely be Command Module Gumdrop. Let's watch the video. The Apollo 9 footage contradicts the explanation by Phil Plate and others, as we can clearly see a bright exhaust, not only at the ignition point, but continuing well beyond that. In fact, evidence from the pro-NASA side supports this. Jay Windley, webmaster of Clavis.org, offers us this snippet. The photo on the far left is a rocket-burning aerozine 50 and nitrogen tetroxide, the exact mixture of propellants used on the lunar module's ascent and descent stages. The exhaust plume is nearly invisible. Nearly invisible? Interesting choice of words there. Here's a close-up of the image in question. The scene is unfortunately brightly lit, which makes it difficult to make out the flame. But just under the nozzle, you can clearly make out a white flame against a darker background, and with the flame extending downwards. If this were set against the blackness of space, its whiteness would be unmistakable. Certainly not nearly invisible, as Jay Windley puts it. Predictably, however, there have been objections from my opponents. Certain viewers have wrote in to claim that if you pause the liftoff video at the moment the ascent stage separates, you can see a tiny white triangle. Apparently, they call this puny triangle an exhaust plume. Looks more like light reflecting off the ejected mylar foil covering to me. And I have no doubt that NASA could throw in some pyrotechnic effects to spice things up a bit as well. But well, that's hardly what rocket exhaust should look like, not even for this type of fuel. How do we know? Because the same propellant mixture was used in the Titan rockets. Here's where they launch from Earth, 
Just like Apollo 9, their plume is prominent and glows brightly well after ignition. Even if, if this brief flash was an exhaust plume, the underbelly of the ascent stage should not be as dark as seen in the liftoff videos. Which brings us to the next objection from the pro NASA side. They allege that the glow would only be visible if you were looking directly into the combustion chamber, which is why we don't see any semblance of a glow until after the LEM performs its pitch maneuver. They claim that the image of the lunar module ascent stage after it has taken off and the image from Apollo 9 look pretty similar. I disagree. The Apollo 17 glow is very orange and dim. The Apollo 9 has a bright white glow, not dim and orange. Now it's possible that the 16mm camera overexposed the plume making it appear white, but in that case it would further demonstrate just how bright these exhaust gases are. Look at how dark the bottom of the Apollo 9 ship is before the engine lights. Then when it starts, you can see how bright the area surrounding the engine bell is. Given how effective these plumes are in illuminating the bottom of the Apollo 9 capsule, we should expect to see this exact same effect on the Apollo 17 the instant the engine lights off. Consider also that in the vacuum of space, these bright exhaust gases would spread out across the bottom of the vehicle, further illuminating the underbelly. There are examples of the Titan rockets launching during the night hours, and the plumes themselves stand out like a sore thumb. So evidently, you wouldn't need to look directly into the combustion chamber to see this light. The light from the plume would illuminate the metal surrounding the engine nozzle. It happened on the Titan launches, it happened in the Apollo 9 footage, yet it didn't happen on Apollo 17. Something's wrong. Following the release of my original video, something else was brought to my attention. Turns out we no longer need to guess what the LEM exhaust should look like, because we have footage of its engine being tested. To keep it simple, it used so-called hypergolic propellants, a rocket fuel and an oxidizer that explode on contact. There were no pumps and no igniter. Now granted, these are not tested in a vacuum, which might cause the exhaust jets to spread out a bit. But no one in their right mind could seriously describe this exhaust as invisible, not by any definition. Nor could anyone deny these jets would extend well below the engine bell. Hi, hey, do you want to play a game now? Okay, here, I help. One of these things is not like the other things. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you guess which thing is not like the other thing before I finish my song? Now look closely. Look. Now something here. One of these things does not belong. Keep in mind these engines, including the Titan rockets, are said to be powered by the same fuel as the lunar module. And yet, they don't fit well at all with what we see in the Apollo liftoffs. I look forward to seeing the propagandist explanations as to why that is the case.